The application of spray-on foam insulation for the Artemis II launch vehicle stage adapter. Completion of the Orion stage adapter for Artemis II. And a heat shield to protect four astronauts returning from the moon on Artemis IV. All that and more on today's Space Launch System Rundown. In September of 2021, engineers at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama completed the application of the Spray-On Foam Insulation, or SOFI, for the launch vehicle stage adapter for the Artemis II crewed mission to the moon. While initially white in appearance, this insulation will slowly change color from a whitish yellow to a deep rust orange as time goes on. The adapter itself is used to house the RL-10 engine and liquid oxygen tank for the ICPS rocket stage during the launch of the rocket, while the foam insulation is used to protect the adapter from aero heating on ascent. Once work on the LVSA is completed, it will board NASA's Pegasus barge and make its way to the KSC in preparation for the Artemis II crewed mission to the moon, the first of its kind in over 50 years. Next up in the news. Engineers at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center have recently completed the Orion Stage Adapter for the Artemis II crewed mission to the moon. The Orion Stage Adapter is a small adapter that allows the 5.5 meter diameter Orion spacecraft to be connected to the 5 meter diameter ICPS stage. Having first flown on Exploration Flight Test 1 in 2014, this represents the third flight rated adapter of its kind to be produced along with the adapter currently stacked on the Artemis One SLS rocket. While small in size relative to the rocket, this adapter is still large enough to house up to 13 secondary payloads within it, along with the massive Orion spacecraft that rides on top of it. Sometime in the future, this adapter will make its way down to the Kennedy Space Center where it will join the rest of the rocket for a launch to the moon sometime in late 2023 or early 2024. On November 10th, the heat shield for the Orion spacecraft that will fly on the Artemis IV mission to the moon was shipped to Lockheed Martin's facility in Sunnyvale, California where it will be cured in an industrial pressurized oven. This ablative heat shield is similar to those currently flying on SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner, while being much larger at 16 feet or 5 meters in diameter, as well as being far more robust in order to handle the extreme temperatures it will experience on a return from lunar orbit. Having first flown on Exploration Flight Test 1 in December of 2014, this heat shield is the fourth of its kind to be built and the largest of its kind ever built. This heat shield will launch to the moon with the Orion spacecraft aboard the largest rocket NASA has ever constructed, the Space Launch System Block 1B. Artemis 4 will deliver the IHAB module to the Lunar Gateway sometime in 2026. Along with the heat shield for Artemis 4, two more major pieces of hardware for the Artemis 4 lunar mission arrived at the Kennedy Space Center on October 28th. These are the umbilical arms for the second mobile launcher tower that will be built for the SLS program in order to support flights for the Block 1B and eventually Block 2 variants of the SLS rocket. Specifically, these umbilical arms will be used to feed cryogenic liquid hydrogen as well as cryogenic liquid oxygen into the propellant tanks of the gigantic Exploration Upper Stage. The Exploration Upper Stage is to be the upgraded second stage of the SLS rocket that will replace the current ICPS. This stage will increase the TLI capacity of the Space Launch System from a mere 27 metric tons to an incredible 45 metric tons, 11 of which can be co-manifested with the Orion spacecraft for gateway construction missions. Continuing with future SLS upgrades, yet another milestone for post-Flight 4 SLS rockets has been achieved, the construction of the first powerhead for the next generation RS-25 engine. This RS-25 powerhead, built by Aerojet Rocketdyne, is the first of its kind to build in over a decade. Having been shipped to the Stennis Space Center on October 28th, the new powerhead incorporates advanced machining and forging processes that are able to reduce the overall cost of the engine for future flights. These new techniques and technologies are actually expected to bring the cost of the RS-25 engine down at nearly 30%. This specific powerhead will be installed into a flight certified engine at the Stennis Space Center where it will undergo a hot fire as well as various other tests sometime next year. In addition to this, 15 other powerheads are currently under production at Aerojet Rocketdyne's facility in order to support SLS flights in the future. And finally, after successfully completing the ninth recovery test at sea, NASA's landing and recovery team has become officially certified to recover the Artemis I Orion spacecraft when it splashes down after returning from its mission to the moon. For the past several years, NASA along with the Department of Defense have been working together to train for recovery ops of the Orion spacecraft. During the latest test, teams used a mock-up of the Orion spacecraft to perform an end-to-end -end recovery test of the vehicle. Teams have actually already performed this procedure once on a real Orion spacecraft following the conclusion of Exploration Mission 1 
all the way back in 2014. And now, seven years later, NASA is once again ready to recover the next ship as well as all that will follow her. That's all for today. Make sure to hit that like button to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified of future videos. I would also like to give a huge thank you to Derek Newsom from Space Scout for providing footage of the application of the spray on foam insulation for the Artemis 2 launch vehicle stage adapter, as well as footage of the completion of the Orion stage adapter for Artemis 2. Make sure to check out www.spacescout.info for any and all news about space. This has been your Space Launch System Rundown.